Yeah, I think so. Uh, welcome to the podcast. Um, this podcast. is our first time doing this. I think that's a little bit loud, actually. Yeah, I think I'm better off here. I think I'm all right. You okay, Chris? Chris is okay. Um, are you okay, Sam? I'm okay, thank yeah. you. I'm glad. To well, like to I was saying you. before, before we we the first time we kind of got this uh, rolling, um, I expected that when the podcast started, we'd go into like a different kind of room. No, a different kind of conversation. <laughs> like I think well, I thought we'd uh, uh. we'd put our like podcast voices on and stuff, but we're just talking like we do anyway, uh, chatting shit like we do anyway. Um, yeah, so welcome everyone who's listening or watching. This is our first time recording the podcast. Uh, we listen. The intentions of the podcast are: we just want to talk to you, want to talk to the people in our Discord, uh, want to talk to people who uh, we're making our game for, who who come to our events um, and chat shit. That's the main purpose. Yeah, mostly just voice our our opinions that no one asks for. Talk. Yeah, we do. We just want to talk. So uh, if we just start. We can just start by doing some of the, like the top, 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 top stories of the day. Top, 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 top. Is that, top is that, stories is that of the day. Voice? Hello, top, yeah. Top. Um, what did you think of the Sonic trailer? Right, I'm the worst. Person that's the to big. Ask about that's Sonic. the big one. I, um, I've got no emotional attachment to Sonic at all. Chris is the one that's got hope for that franchise. Yeah, that's I, true. I stopped clocking in at about eight years old. Um, I hope guys. No, no. You say you say that, but any time any news comes out, you you perk up a little bit. Well, before we go into too much of what your opinion is, um, so Jeff Fowler tweeted, uh, "Today is the day. We could not be more excited to share our new Sonic with you. Uh, not new Sonic trailer, but just new Sonic. Uh, as we know, there's been a redesign. Uh, thank you for your patience and support. This wouldn't have been possible without the fans. Uh, that was Jeff Fowler, the director of the film." Um, and he tweeted that along with the tra trailer on Tuesday morning. Um, the re redesign has now been rolled out across all of the marketing assets, the trailers, the posters, all the websites, everything. Um, and people are starting to kind of like give their opinion. Mm. And maybe, listen, some of some people I think are going back on the fact that they trashed it so much. Was. Uh, what was your What was your opinion? So the first one, yeah, uh, the first Sonic, the, cat the first no, thing. No, no. Do you know what I actually call him? I call him a kid what? who lost at Jumanji. He looks like a yeah. kid who rolled the fucking dice <laughs> on a Jumanji body. He went blue abomination. What's up? <laughs> That's not a bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I get you there. <laughs> yeah, he just. I think he looks really Et dirty. something out of like Willy Wonka. No, no, like the thing that got me about the first Sonic was he looks dirty. Like his fur looks dirty. Like he doesn't look News clean. in Simran calls Sonic dirty. <laughs> he looks dirty. dirty. No, I like the dirty, redesign so. though. The redesign's good. He still doesn't fit in with the world. No, but, I know but I don't he's matter. not supposed to. The whole point is that he's a video game character. Good point. You you kept saying this all week that he was never going to fit in to begin with. He was never going to fit in. Because the, as a character design, he looks more faithful to what he is. So that's all right. Yeah, that's true. But there is a disconnect between him and the world, which there is supposed to be, but I feel like it's too much of a disconnect. No, a I, little I, bit. I think I think that's the technical limitations of redoing it. And what? How, how many months did they have? Is, is it been like free? Oh, no. But like, how, uh, when did they start the redesign? Three months ago, wasn't it? Four? Three or four? I can't remember. I can't remember when the trailer was revealed, but yeah, it was, it's, been, it's a relatively short time. A relatively short time. I don't know if you can hear Chris in the background there, but um, we're going to give him his own mic at some point. We're just uh, playing with kind of testing it at the moment. <laughs> He's not in the mic yet. Um, no, I like the redesign. I think he... I, I think he he looks so much better. He just does. He looks yeah. so much better. And 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 I am worried that like some of the more uh, technically limited, the technically advanced scenes in the in the film, um, are going to show that how much time they had to redo the character and, and re implement him to each of the scenes. But hopefully, listen. The new trailer, of the film looks fun. Jim Carrey looks better than he did in any well, of the I other trailers. I think Jim Carrey was the one highlight of the whole movie. Even when the original trailer came out, we were all saying Jim Carrey is the only value point here, really. Like, I think just after Jim Carrey went incredibly, like, strangely woke at the start of the year that I was just worried that is he going to bring any of that into um, into his roles? Like, I, I, I went back and watched The Grinch last weekend, and yeah. that, was, um, that was great. Like, he's fantastic in that. But again... How many years ago was that? Ten years ago? 
longer. Yeah. How Ma- many years ago was Grinch? I always think of him as the mask thing. He'll always be the mask. Yeah, in the mask. Yeah. And, and if he brings any of that to Sonic, I'm fine. You know what I mean? Mm. Uh, let me see. Uh, what, when was Grinch? Uh, but I also, he's a double flip coin for me because as soon as I think of the mask, I also think of Batman and Robin with our dear old good friend George Clooney where he plays the Riddler. Who played the Grinch in the newest? I don't know. I, I, I didn't really want to watch the new Grinch. So How the Grinch Stole Christmas came out in 2000. So we're, we're not, we're talking nearly 20 years ago. Um, I don't know why I thought it was 10. And then Grinch last year was played by... Yeah, there was the the yeah, the re- there was another one. Tyler the Creator did an album for it. Tyler the Creator or, did an or album. a song. He did a song called uh, yeah, in conjunction with the the re- release of Grinch last year. Um, let's have a look. Stars Benedict Cumberbatch. So yeah, that's not Wait, bad. He's he plays the Grinch. Yeah, yeah. My guy's getting everywhere lately. I know. Yeah. Um. So yeah, no, I like the redesign. I like the redesign. I like some of the articles that are coming out. Um, the positive reception seems to be sort of shifting people's opinions a little bit now. Yeah, there's that's more good. hope for the movie. Definitely, like it just looks more fun than it did uh, last time we saw the trailer. Uh, there was an opinion piece by Brian Altano from IGN uh, called uh, "I Trust the Sonic Movie Trailer and How I Already Regret It," um, and basically what he says is uh, he goes into but, details of like what, like, what do you think everyone was too harsh to judge? Well, Chris says he doesn't think so. What about you? I I I understand what what Brian is trying to kind of. Uh... We still don't know much about the movie. For all we know, it could still be trash. Like the story, the setup, it could still be absolute trash. But I don't think the criticism of the design of Sonic was too harsh. Like he doesn't he, he doesn't fit. Like he looks like furry pawn. He, he looks like something you find <laughs> yeah, in deviant true. art. No, I know, I know, he but. I think I think people were too hard to judge, and this is this is why. Um, one of the things that, that that Brian brings up is he says that shouldn't we just allow kids? Uh, shouldn't we just allow it to be a kids' movie and not scrutinize it for not being what we wanted? Like us old, very miserable fans at this point, because we're so hurt by all of the Sonic well, games well, and the IP. You two are. I'm safe. <laughs> no, but I, I'm not the bit, m- biggest Sonic fan, really. But like, I did play the games when I was younger, and and no, they've just got worse and worse. In fair respect, hmm. what kid would have been happy with that? Uh, Chris said, "What kid would have been happy in that?" I think every kid. I I don't think they watched that movie for the same things. Interjecting what Brian Altano says, he says, "Kids flock to the potentially are uh, oh wait, kids flock to potentially engaging experiences." Based on how cool, fun, and interesting they look, not what the tomato, t- tomato, well, tomato did, tier but or did. Metacritic aggregate tells them. But he didn't look cool or interesting. He looked just like a dirty. But the film art rap. But that, that thing. Do you do you care that? Like, does a child care how how true to the character it is? We do because no, we grew you, up the character. But but, but my but my my girlfriend's my girlfriend's cousins and th- siblings don't care. Definitely not. No, they just want to go see a cool Like you movie. just said, the kids care about how it looks and how cool it is, but the design... The, the design mm. was never... He wasn't appealing. To us, because we... Uh, yeah. I just don't think, as it, even if it's aimed at kids, he it looked like they were trying to be real with him. It looked like you were trying to turn a cartoon hedgehog. Yeah, so, so well, that's it's what Chris is saying. Chris is saying that uh, he doesn't see a kid wanting a plushy of the original design you say that though but like if you look at any movie that is about a a a being that is not from earth coming to earth and a human being a, developing this like friendship relationship with it so what what do we have we have et we have even the new bumblebee movie um we have uh paul lilo and stitch well, yeah, Lilo and Stitch. With that, I'm I'm talking about like the, the real, real life, cinematic movie where, and we've seen so many of them. Yeah. Um, Ted, even my guy's a, a bear, a space magic. But if bear. you replace, if you replace Ted, if you replace Sonic with Ted in that original Sonic concept, would it matter if, would it matter that it was like it would 
just be the same character, wouldn't it, really? It'd be the same film. It's just a bear. Not really, because the humour from Ted comes from... It's, it's, it's cute, cute teddy bear doing really outrageous things. Did you see the Pikachu movie? Yeah, I watched it. Did you watch it? Yeah, I, went I didn't watch it. it. I went and watched it the week. It my, in- my first thoughts was Ryan, Ryan Reynolds is amazing, right? But if you put Ted in that film as Pikachu... I don't really see the difference. It depends. So, well, no, it's a whole movie based in the Pokemon universe. So that's kind of. Are you on about like the character of Ted being in the Pokemon universe? I'm just talking just about having, like the the main the character and the dynamic seen. between the person and the and the, the 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 being the animal. Like in those movies, you can replace any of those small animals with each other, and it wouldn't really make a difference. Well, in a movie, that's like, my worry with the Sonic movie. It's just going to be another one of them. Okay, all right, yeah, I sort of see where you're coming from. That I thought you were saying that the character of Pikachu doesn't matter in that role; he could be replaced with anyone. Oh no, that's Are what you? I'm saying. Yeah, it doesn't really matter if you put put Ted in that, and it was Ted, Ted running about with the same humor and the same dynamic. I, I don't see. Yeah, it was, it was going to be the, it's the same kind of movie anyway. It was always going to be the same. Hmm. Kind of movie. It seems like a bit of a cop out to, to make. Movie. The scene in the garage that Chris oh, is talking about. Oh god. Oh yeah. So this. The so what Chris, what Chris said is like the original Sonic trailer tried to kind of like hide Sonic. I think probably because they had the worries. They that did the same thing in the reason. Pokemon yeah. movie though when he discovers like, Pikachu for the first time and he can yeah, understand he can it talking. Like the difference between mm. the two trailers, the, the new one, they want front and center. They want to show him off as much as possible. Yeah. So Whereas quickly going on to, to say that. Um, Brian Altano says, when it's a movie based on something they already enjoy, like a video game franchise or toy line, they want it to evoke the same bright, colourful and energetic feeling that they're already connected to. In a litany, litany of ways, the Sonic Hedgehog movie is already doing that. And yes, of course, there are better kids' movies out there at any given moment. Basically meaning that like kids don't care, it's a fun movie to go to, and kids don't care that... like." We, they're watching like the 19th Minion movie but they just enjoy it because the Minions are f- cool why do we have to take it so seriously as gamers and gaming fans that we scrutinise the design of the main character when the intended audience a little, a little bit like what we were talking about with the Pokemon games before the po- new Pokemon games aren't really reinventing the wheel but a 7 year old to a 10 year old who's playing Pokemon games doesn't really care they just, they just want to play a cool Pokemon game and they still get that same feeling. We didn't care when we were younger that Pokemon games were pixelated little things on the screen. Just because they're reimagined 3D things now, it seems like it's us that are kicking off about it and not um, not the intended audience. So that's kind of like my 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 uh, bookend to that. So oh, okay. yeah, obviously, you di- di- disagree, I, agree, or you or I'd whatever. I'd argue against that because it's kind of like the core Pokemon fans that are already arguing against the current release mm. of it. Not like that's actually kind of counterproductive because it's actually the younger generation who don't care about the Pokemon because they've not grown up with it with the evolution of it. So to them, this is the norm. Whereas to the older generation, it is kind of more. Can you out. turn your gain up a little bit yeah. on the back of your mic? Sorry about sorry yeah. about that. There, the other way. There. Uh, yeah. Can you talk now? Hello. You've turned it all the way down. Yeah. Yeah. Can you do it? talk now? See if you can. Pikachu. Should be alright. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Can you come a bit closer to the mic and talk a bit louder? Yep. Yeah. So, um, no, I understand what you're saying. I do understand. Yes. I, I know we 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 hold these characters dear I'm... to our hearts, but. The intended audience for a new Sonic movie is to re to introduce kids to the new Sonic. Oh yeah, it's carrying it so, on, it's cre- creating a reusable fan base. Yeah. So, listen, th- that kind of brings me on to the next point, which is um, so Star Wars jo- Jedi Fallen Order's review embargo lifts today, yeah. which is the November the fourteenth. Reviews for that will be coming in uh, soon from everyone. Um, how excited are you? I'm. To- I'm excited, but I'm just. I don't want to get my hopes up because I know what's coming. It's screwed out of the way, right? 
this Star Wars game doesn't fit within EA's business plan of what they have ready. Which is? Live services, live as we've services. seen with Battlefront 2. Although, as I've been saying to you lot, I'm actually tempted to go back into Battlefront 2 now that it actually looks like an on-the-ground. So basically all the content's there. But this game, what a lot of people don't know is, is, is being made by Respawn Interactive. And it's been in development for four years before EA started to introduce this whole our plan for the Star Wars license to turn it into a live service. Mm. And they've said it stated that single player games are not part of their active rota. So yeah. a good single player game doesn't fit in what they have planned for the future. So as we discussed before, if it does really well, we just know they're gonna turn it into a live service. That's probably true. realistically. No, I, I, I they're can see t- that. And if it flops and, and if it flops point, and if and if it flops, that just reimburses EA's ego about that single player games don't do well so we're not going to get another good single player Star Wars ever game really well and if it does really well yeah but could it but could it because people have been waiting for a good Star Wars single player game like the Force Unleashed how long has it been since we had a good Star Wars single player game that's what I mean so yeah we're just waiting for a good Star Wars in general good Star Wars content but the only thing that throws me off is give me a good Star Wars film Anything. Give me a good Star Wars book, and yeah, I'll probably look at the front. But the only thing book. that throws me off is I love the combat. It looks incredible. It looks like Dark Souls meets Uncharted, which mm. I like the look of. There's something about the main character. He looks very uninteresting, like very. I don't really like his face. Either, and also, but... I could be wrong. Correct me. Does anyone watch Gotham? No. I swear, he, is that the guy? He looks who, like the guy, played, from, the guy from, from Gotham, the Joker. The yeah, guy. yeah. Is yeah. it him? I don't think so, but it could be. He looks a lot like him. But yeah, there's something about him. He doesn't strike me as very interesting. I hope I'm wrong, but I'm going off the trailers, his voice acting. Okay, we'll I, see. We'll see, though. We'll see. Because we'll I, I, I think I think we'll be pleasantly, pleasantly surprised. surprised from the gameplay. Very pleasantly well, surprised. I think it's going to... People are comparing it to like Dark Souls and stuff in I'll terms find. of how, how the gameplay plays out, which is better. Because if they, if they would have given us just Uncharted, but for thing, I, I don't think... It would have been a linear experience. We would have well, that's come what, away from it and we would have enjoyed that's it. That's what they had planned originally yeah. because that's what Terry Pratchett's daughter was doing the lead writing for. The cancelled... I can't remember what it was called. The demo one. The, 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 the Hans, one with Han Solo in. 13, 13 or the... one with Amy Oh, yeah, that one, yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I, th- I, I personally think that it, it'll perform. I'll find out Like, tomorrow. I was just reading a, a Forbes article as well, and this is what I've just brought up. Yeah, it's out tomorrow. It's out I'm tomorrow, go, and the go. review embargo is out today, so... I'm going to go get it tomorrow. Um, a Forbes that. article. Why are you rubbing your hands? Um, scared you will be. Jedi's Fallen Order is the darkest chapter in the Star Wars universe, composers say. Uh, set five years after the tragic events of Episode 3, Fallen Order centers on Cal Kestis... Kesti a young Padawan on the run from the Empire with his trusty droid buddy, BD-1. They really need to like work on the naming conventions for... Uh, well, well, BD-1 is just like... Oh, I thought you meant... Oh, I thought you talked about the main protagonist. Oh, no, they can give him whatever name ever. You know what I mean? Can I make him as alien possible. Padawan, seriously, you know, even when I watched the original Star Wars film. <laughs> you know, I don't mind Do it. you know what I actually thought that word stood for for ages? I thought it's what, like, Jedi's who were in love with each other called each other like they gave each other the name Padawan. Padawan. I thought it was like boyfriend girlfriend. I Padawan. thought Padawan was what like Padme for ages. when they're um slice. Yeah. Padme know. when they're slicing uh when they're slicing pears and feeding each other pears. That makes me want to throw up. It's still better than the last Jedi though, but we won't go into that. We won't open that oh, kind of word. No. We might do a podcast one day where that I will open. It'll just be me. I'll just sit in front of a camera. You don't, you don't need me here. For that. I don't need anyone here for this. I'd, I'd, I'd go. I'd, yeah, I can't even get into it. Oh, we we shall not name. He, he you shall, shall not, not be named. Be named. Um, is he like Voldemort. Yeah, he just... is. That may, that may sound like. Um, the setup for a light-hearted road-tripping comedy across the galaxy, but don't be fooled because the game's plot unfolds during one of the bleakest times in the franchise's history, and that was Jess Wise. Uh, Vice. Jess Vice. Oh, Jess Vice. Weiss. Jess Wise. Oh, Weiss. Um, and she is a writer for Forbes. Um, yeah, so I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it. I, ju- I just, um, I'm sceptical. I'm not skeptical of the gameplay. I'm looking forward to it, but where does it fit within the? 
I'm quite still optimistic about where it, it sits within the Star Wars universe um, and where does it sit with in like EA's plans. As weird as it sounds, I'm not going into it hoping for a good story. If it makes me feel like a Jedi and the gameplay is solid and it just feels good to play in a Star Wars mm. game, I'll be content. Okay, is the uh, red button flashing on that uh, GoPro? Yeah. Amazing. That means it's recording. Right. Um, thank thank you. Uh, before we move on from the news stories, is there anything else? News stories of the week. Death Stranding? No. I'm, Don't say no. I'm just... Uh, We'd love to know uh, everyone yeah, starts to listen to this. Can, like, it seems to be Can 50, you please 50. come to my rescue? Because Kieran's, I'm down. Kieran's the only one that's down. down. It's... For me, it's a lot of things around Hiro Kojima that throw me off the game. Is that Metal Gear is a very, very convoluted story. Yeah, that's true. And I feel like with this, there's just not enough subs. And I love walking simulators. You're talking to someone who's played every single one. What Remains of Edith Finch, Firewatch, all of them. Yeah, but it's a different... It's 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 a strand game. That's what he's calling them now. Yeah, it's a new genre. You can't invent a new genre like that. Give me... Me walking but across America very... with some packages on my back as Norman Reedus. Not saying much like he doesn't in The Walking Dead. I'm down. He's just literally revised his role from The Walking Dead, just walking over the country. That's how The Walking Dead he, is. They even oh. give him a motorcycle. That's true. That's true, they did. Um, oh, I'm just... I just don't think there's enough substance. Anyway. It makes me want to see Hideo Kojima well, that's all he wants to be. No, that's all. That, 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 like, uh, that, that's, yeah. that's all I think he wants to be. That, that's literally. You do realize that's all he's ever wanted to do, which is why he gets all the big actors he involved. Want, he wants. He wants the celebrity well, endorsement it, from yeah. the West, so that when he does get the budget to make a film, they'll all come and be part of his film. Yeah, I, I will be impressed though. He is probably the most famous game developer in the world. Like he's the only game developer you've yeah. ever seen. On I think Conan he's just O'Brien. become the most. F- I think yeah, if he just got an, he just got a Guinness World Record actually for being the the um, the most popular game developer in the world, which is exciting. And if you get Michael, oh, I can't pronounce his second name. What's he called? Um, Hannibal. Michael Jackson. No, no, no Hannibal. What's he called? <laughs> What's he called? The actor yeah, from the trailer, <laughs> one with the black that. tears. I, I always, I'm oh, Maz Mickels, Maz Maz. Mickelson. Yeah, that yeah. I think that's it. Yeah, I mean, in the game. That's the, the, guy in the game. That's the only time he's ever acted in the game. Same. No, oh wait, it? Norman Reedus has been in a game before. So never mind. He was in the Walking Dead game. So does that really count? Not really, because it's an awful one. What? Dead Soros isn't even. He's not even in it, is he? Yeah, he is. All oh, right. Who's? I think he is actually. Yeah. Is, no, yeah. my bad. Who? Uh, yeah, yeah. He plays himself in the game. Himself. Well, he he looks like himself and practically oh, is himself because they work together on it. Like he he actually did some of the writing for the game because he was meant to work on Silent Hill as well, or PT. Oh, that's nice. Right, listen to this. You can get a Black Friday UK deals, all of the best deals on gaming, 4K TVs, laptops, and more. Um, you can get Nintendo Switch Lite with Pokemon Shield now. What it was two fifty, like two forty four. Now you can get for two nineteen. That's not a bad deal. But yeah, let's move on. Um, I think the the our intentions with this first podcast was uh, to introduce you to um, one of our members of the team who's making uh, our games. Um, let me just turn the camera back on. Um, who's making our our video games? Um, and that's Simran Whitten. I don't make games. Well, Simran doesn't make games, but he's part of the team. He likes to think he does. No, I no, don't. he doesn't. I don't want to make so, games. So, uh, for, for those who I don't, don't want know, you, Chris. <laughs> so, the, for those who don't know, um, we are a, a part of an indie development studio called Try Heart Interactive. Um, we make um, video games, our indie games, um, and All we're currently games. working on one called The Ottoman Empire, which you can't see. Uh, we, you can see the bottom of. I, I, I'll, I'd bring it down, but I don't really want to. No, I don't want to rip um, off the wall. Which is releasing early 2020 next year uh, on Nintendo Switch, Xbox, and PC. Um, that's that, that's the plug. Um, but shameless it isn't really plug. about <laughs> what? Shameless plug. Shameless plug. But our intention with this uh, podcast was to really introduce you to to who we are as developers, have a little bit of conversation, uh, talk a bit of crap, 
um, and then kind of go from there. Um, I'm Kieran, by the way. Um, but let's let's so not, let's get into that. We'll go into Simran. Um, Simran Whitten, please uh, introduce yourself. What? Who? Who are you? Where are you from? Uh, right. And um, what? And what do you do? That, this is so formal. <laughs> saying <laughs> no, this, this to so you, formal. you realize I'm, I'm literally saying this to a guy who knows me better than most. Well, yeah. just go. For it. Yeah, yeah, you can go. Cool. Uh, I'm the people so... listening to the podcast won't. Oh, I hate well, introducing no. myself. Like go. even even when we do talk, I don't talk, introduce man. myself. I'm gonna go right. deep. I'm gonna deep. go deep. Let's go. How deep? Right. How deep does the rabbit hole go? Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, I'm Simran. Go. I'm one of the team members here at Dry Heart. Uh, I'm. I was originally born down south. Didn't stay there, thankfully. I live here in the north, Manchester, the best city in the earth. And yeah, I met Kieran in a toilet where he propositioned me love, to, why do you tell this to I love telling people yeah. the story where he propositioned me to join the team and here I am I know it's a great uh, origin bring story bring the mic up a little tiny bit you love the origin story Chris oh, I can't believe it he tells everyone we I love telling the event. origin story um, of so um, he just yeah, doesn't a little like bit more about Simran's so. role so Simran first started out on the team um, when we first started in 2017 he then went off to finish his third year while we were kind of like running around chasing our tails, kind of forming what is our team now. Um, he originally came on as producer, but because of his role, at, because of university and because he couldn't really fulfill his role with us for for the longest time, he uh, went away to finish the uni and come back. And he came back as our events organiser and um, as our community manager as well um trying his hand for the first time at community management mm-hmm. um but he is the founder of uh, manchester gamers unite which is um our kind of flagship events now um over the past kind of year two years now it's become part of the company structure a big asset for us as a business and one that we want to kind of keep growing yes mm-hmm. um so yeah we'll just start yeah. with that you know what I mean? Where do yeah. where do we even begin? Right, where, where does where does this? where does Manchester Gamers Unite and your role within the industry start? Take us back, actually. Okay. Take us back to the beginning. Why games? Why games? All right, it's the cliche answer. We we all love games growing up. We mm. loved them. Love playing them. I just love story. I love stories more than anything. That's what drew me. It's just the stories side of games. Why? Because I originally wanted to be a narrative designer, but then okay. there's no roles in that in this industry. <laughs> I, w- I was not going down that dark path. Yeah, I think everyone told us that at uni, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, but I had one tutor actually sit down with me and say, yeah, please don't go that route. That's fine. You're, t- you're too good for that role. Mm. So, just good for Yeah. No, yeah. T- they told me that as well, because I, I went into uni saying mm. that I wanted to do narrative. Yeah. Um, but, so, yeah, I've always, always wanted to do it. It's been my dream, like, been very focused on that one industry that's mm. the one industry i've always wanted to go into it was always games nothing wouldn't settle for anything less did loads of other courses at it none of them could hold my attention my it teacher you actually tried to get me to stay in the it industry she tried really? to stop me from leaving that's mad so she's the reason i am where i am now so i love her to bits yeah but is that no her name's cheryl oh right. yep. yeah i thought cheryl about, um, she just had a baby bless her I'm i thought we were talking about uh, beth. beth no i'll get on to beth in a minute yeah, yeah. Beth, we'll get on to beth in a minute so beth's my second mum um so games you like you love narratives but like why what is it about because games put you in a narrative better than any film any tv show mm. the only time a tv show has ever come close to it is probably it was game of thrones game but we, well, we, we won't we, talk about we that don't, we don't talk about that anymore no but you're there that's what i love you're yeah. there you're there in the thick of it you are the character even if it's not a custom character you are that character you control them you sit down for a film it's done in two hours most mm games are better because let's just remove the whole you get value for your money the longevity of it yeah, yeah it's sure. something you can keep going back to and just playing and that's what i love it's why i love things like fallout new vegas skyrim witcher yeah because they're very focused on you as a player you you're in the driver's seat and that's and what I love. a bit close to you. and that's what i love i love a good story i just love anything with that can hook me Walking simulators, Firewatch. I actually love Firewatch. Is one of my favourite stories. Surprisingly, I, love Firewatch. I have a yearly tradition where I play it once a year. Once a year, I play that game because you knock it out in a day. Mm. 
I love it. Play that game once a year. I love it to bits. And what did games offer you growing up? Because hmm. we talked about this a little bit. We have talked about, about like, a lot of people use it as escapism. And yeah, we've talked about it. it was never escapism for me. It was more enjoyment. Hmm. Like they provided enjoyment for me like nothing else could growing up. Obviously, I was a very social kid. Yeah, you know I me. Mean? Yeah. I love talking to people. You can't shut me up. Like I used to go out and play all the time. But there's something about video games that they just offer you an enjoyment that. Well, at the time, anyway, because they were so new as well. They were a very new thing when we were growing up. Like, yeah. they'd only been around, really. Well, the but, industry's but, not been around for that long. The industry's not even 100 years old. Mm. Like, they'd been around for a while before us, but we were the first generation to get introduced to 3D, really, weren't we? Like, 3D yeah. platforms beyond the retro age. Yeah. Like, we were born just sort of outside. I think that's that. why I, br I brought up that point before. Of, like, we're so scrutinous. We, we scrutinise so much... Um, like these new renditions of of the characters we grew up with, but we didn't care about that. No, you know what I mean. We didn't. We didn't care that when we first played Tomb Raider, her her entire body was just body a bunch of pixels. A, a, you a look bunch at of like corners and triangles. Like and you stuff, look at she Solid felt, Snake. She felt like the baddest badass character that we know of today. Yeah. So when well, we look at that's true. Yes. Yeah. I'm glad I grew up when I did though like when I did because yeah. I got the best of both worlds not the isolation that technology's brought a lot of the younger generation today but yeah. also I got to watch the evolution of it which is the best bit I appreciated the retro I appreciated the earlier consoles I've appreciated next gen I've appreciated the high realistic tech visuals that we have today that's why I'm glad I grew up when I did in terms of video games carry on talking this yeah. I'm just gonna, uh, I need to reset on my cameras yeah, um, but so yeah, that's why I like games so much. I love stories though. Like anything with a good story can hook me. Like don't get me wrong, as I've grown older, I've grown to play more games. Like, I'll sit and play FIFA. I know Chris won't, but like I'll sit and play FIFA. But it's got to be with the right people. I love to see Chris playing FIFA. It'd be so funny. Like arcade clubs, a place that I'll just sit and play anything. But like, I'll play anything now. But my preference has always well, been story so, games. So, so quickly, as I just swap out these yeah, yeah. SD cards. Uh, what was the games that you started playing? What made you want to become oh, right, a game right. developer? Right. I slash not really a game, but a game developer. Work in the game well, I'm not a game developer. You are, Marcus. Okay. Right, I can tell you the game that did make me want to... Well, I've, all, plus I've always known what I wanted to do. For as, it's always been video games industry, what I've always wanted to do. But I can tell you the game that really kick-started it, the game that made me go, this. That was Fahrenheit Indigo Prophecy, a quantum dream game by David Cage. Which was really dark. What was that? But, Say that word again. Fahrenheit Indigo Prophecy. It was quantum. It was basically right. Have you heard that? Fahrenheit. Yeah. Right. yeah. Basically, it was the Heavy Rain before Heavy Rain came out. Oh, I know the one. Yeah. It, it was dark for a kid of five year old to be playing as well. Satanic rituals and shit. But it. No, no, no. But we didn't know what it was. We no, didn't know what it was, lot, man. No. And the so, reason I liked it is because it was the first game I ever played where choice mattered, mm. where you did choices and they actually impacted the well, story. That's so hard to do now. Do you think in 2019 that we we still struggle with that today? I know, that's game, what I was going to say. Like, we, like, like Cyberpunk, for instance. Cyberpunk is 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 predicated now on come March, April next year, we're going to be playing a game that every single choice has such a big monumental impact. See, I have. Do you think? that it's just going to be like every other game where I have trouble all of these branching decisions just lead back to the same place. I'll tell you. Because no game really... No. Heavy Rain did, and no, I, there I is, just don't think we... There is a game I've played yeah. this year that I will say... So I can name three games off the top of my head where I felt that the choices actually affect it in a meaningful way. That One is Heavy Rain. Mm. Two is the Banner Sag series, which is a bit easier because it's a hand-drawn 2D game. You're not limited by 3D stuff and making yeah. stuff like that. And it's all text-based. It's like a choose-your-own-adventure game. So that's different. The other one is, is Detroit Become Human because that game actually shows you that it's not chatting shit. Is because every time you make a choice at the end of a chapter or at the end of a mission, it actually does this huge branching line story path and you could go, oh, shit. Okay. And, and you actually see where all the... That's all understandable. But... And the game massively changes. Mm. But even something like, I love The Witcher's Death. Love it. There's only a yeah, handful. It's a good one. There's a handful of times I feel like, okay. Like, you'll make a choice. You'll come back and the village will be destroyed. That's it. Like, yeah. there was no... All right, so, so I've lost it. I've lost a crafted yeah, I've game lost, in it. Right, it was... so I've lost a vendor. I've lost a vendor being killed. And 
a co- maybe a quest giver, but that yeah. doesn't really. So I know, but that so, doesn't really impact moving your journey on. in the game. So you you got into because of narrative, and then and then you went through college, and 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 you got into uni, and and mm. you explored a few different avenues. Well, I only then what that. what where did Manchester Game of United come? Where did that right. come? Because that so I'll tell you going from narrative to, to Manchester Game of United is a it wasn't a big planned, step. which is how most people with the sort of stuff it was never planned never planned so my uni I decided shut up you it was never planned <laughs> so basically I actually decided my uni I was going to go to by flipping a coin so I had a friend at my old college called Jesse and basically I couldn't decide what uni I was either going to go to Huddersfield or I was going to go to a place called FutureWorks I actually couldn't decide so I said right I'm going to flip a coin mm. twice I'm going to go to FutureWorks if it lands on tails heads for Huddersfield it landed on tails three times so I sent off my U-class application. There we go. So it anyway, gets towards the first end of year of uni. I was actually going to drop out. So I just wasn't in a good place in life. And mm. I needed to walk away from it. And um, basically, I met a friend who I originally set up Gamers Unite with over a Twitch stream, which Futureworks retweeted. Because I'm a huge Dragon Age fan, and Kieran's going to roll his eyes. We know. It's my favorite, know. favorite game franchise in the whole world. And they retweeted a blog of this person doing a Twitch stream. And I, just, I was eating my tea at the night, and... I never watched Twitch. This is a weird thing. I never watched Twitch ever. Like I'm just there's something about sitting there watching a person play a game on Twitch that just doesn't infuse me. Mm-hmm. For some reason, I pressed that link, watched it, and then we chatted back and forth and that stuff like that. And mm. we said we were going to host a gamers night one night just so we could meet because we'd never met at that point. So yeah. should we just do a gamers night? A bunch of gamers get them in a room. And, and was chat. it called Manchester Gamers United? No, it was just a one-off. It didn't even have a name. It was just something we threw out on Facebook, just called Gamers Meetup on facebook no and we ran a game as we ran a facebook ad 50 to 80 people turned up and then the manager of the venue we used at the time called dive bar came up to us and he was literally like you know you can do another event here right like you, you know you can do another event like the guy was des- like that's mad that's yeah. mad because i i i you came on i hold year. it so like so dear to my heart now like it is a, a big it's like Part a, of you. A, it's like me adopting a child when they're going because you Te- the teenage it's, years and, and now I, I love it as much as if it, it it's was, your I own baby my own. and I, I, I do like try hard and it's the company oh what, what that button there Ooh, I don't know let me see you're gonna have to bear with us this is our first yeah, time yeah this is our first time leave us alone <laughs> <laughs> nah it's fine we'll, once we can set these cameras up to be a bit less temperamental yeah I think it's lost battery and it's me well, as well. It doesn't want to look at me. No, anymore. no. Listen, I've got a backup camera. Yeah, we got your phone. We got the new iPhone. Four <laughs> right. K. Can't record anything four K. I don't think. Yeah, the internet shits a brick when you do four K. <laughs> um, but yeah. So ca- carry on anyway. Yeah. Uh, wait, 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 wait. So, no, so, where did it go from there? There yeah. we go. Interview skills, top. In- interview skills, top tier. Skyrim skill tree. Right. Even though we all know you hate the Skyrim. Where did it go from tree? there? Where did it go from there? Yeah. Um, yeah so we did another one that did really well and it was by the third event that it clocked into my brain what it could be so and what actually did it for me was so a big thing for me that's always been is communication with this industry as we all know there is a massive distrust in this industry especially from a consumer standpoint between the gamers and the developers developers have a very hard life making games is very difficult I was starting to learn this at uni, how difficult it really is. And after speaking to a couple of the developers who turned up to the event, and then you start to learn these things. A big thing for me is always been, one, I just like bringing people together. The main thing for me for an event is if I see people, I've said it to you in the past when you've recorded events, is when I see people having a nice time, that's enough for me. Yeah, of course. I just like bringing people together is what makes me happy. That's that's, that's the same for me. I think that's why we we gel quite a bit. And but the thing that sort of made me determined to use it as a platform for something was when I actually saw a Star Citizen developer chatting to a de- gamer. So a bunch of gamers went up to a guy they clocked work to Star Citizen. They went, "Why is your game never out? Can you please tell us what's well, going we're on?" Still having that conversation yeah, now. We're still having that conversation. <laughs> but and I was just sat there. I was at the bar having a drink with a friend that I had at the time, and I just saw this developer talking to him, and he was just explaining. I was like, "There, that is a conflict resolved through just simple communication." Get him yeah. drunk, get and even him. if it's only such a small scale, like yeah. go, go if you if you met. So say our, our events now mm. range from three to six hundred people, depending on the event. Like mm. if you spoke to every one of them, then that's that it's 
the human interaction that can't be scaled by putting out a press release mm. because as great as social media is and as great as these communication platforms that we use um it's just it just can't be scaled no it can't like teaching someone and telling someone your truth and for them to believe you and isn't necessarily also, the easiest thing when you're like communicating that, online we see it in press all the time people talking to them face to face it's the environment i think helps as well because they're on equal footing and this is a big thing that i'm always telling you is there's no formal barrier and i think that's what really does the gelling so yeah. well at the events is that they're on the same level as each other whether they're a showcase or whether they're an attendee there's no formal barrier that yeah. they're just they're a person same as you they're there after have a drink and a good time and that's get true. feedback from you and that's what does it and it was at that moment that i sort of went i could actually do some good here i could get people together and get them just to have a good time and help developers out so it, it was at that point that me and his friend worked together and we got three developers at the fourth event. And I can tell you this now. Two of them, I remember, one was one was Prospect Games with their game Unbox, which was launching, I think it was either a year or a few months afterwards. A guy called Tim Keenan, who was working on a game called Off and On Again. And there was a third developer. And to this day, I still can't remember who he was. Oh, what might, even, listen, I without our, our close-knit, the family is yeah. now of, of Manchester and, Gamers Unit, United and Gamers United as a brand. Mm-hmm. It's probably one of the guys that still works with us now. Yeah. The dip in Honestly, and out. I remember what he looks like, and he brought a game on a tablet with him, but I can't remember what the game was called. Mm. But yeah, who we still know today, Andrew Benson from Prospect and Tim, they were the original people That's to ever great. showcase. I can't believe that because we still work with them to this day. Yeah, they were the originals. Um, and it was from that point on that it started growing. It became monthly because that's how you grow things, consistent content, as I'm sure you understand. Mm. And that's sort of how we grew and expanded and started to dominate a sort of community event because yeah. it was small scale but obviously that when you came on board that's when it went from being this collective of 300 people in a bar yeah. to a more professional scale event when we got yeah. given the new venue that we had that's when it my dream sort of started to become a bit yeah. more manifest because as you know I was getting a bit rigid in the old venue because yeah just, of course the facilities but the staff were dead understanding they knew they could only offer me limited stuff mm. I had bigger ambitions for it and that sort of September event, rebrand event, it's still my favourite event today. I think mm. it's yours as well. I don't know though. Has it been your favourite event? Um, I liked March this year. March this year was good. March was a good one. I think the rebrand was my favourite. was just because of... It was, yeah, when the the, it was, was when the dream for what the event could be took manifestation. Yeah, yeah. That manifested itself. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. So, moving forward, what, mm. what, what, do, you, what do you see happening? What do you want? Uh, not... Listen, separate yourself from, from Gamers Unite and separate yourself from, like what what do you want as a as a person, as a developer, as a it's um it's very hard because life has taught me you should never have goals and ambitions change. Like mm-hmm. they change all the time. Like you could have the most perfect flawed out plan. It's gonna yeah. change. So it's hard to say what I want it to be because I could have the most perfect idea of what it could be, but it might end up becoming something completely different to what it is. Yeah. I want it to carry on doing what it does, which is bring people together to have a good time yeah. where they can just leave the troubles at the door, have fun, yeah. play games, but use these games as a platform to bring people together because video games also play devil's advocate, do have this tendency to cause isolation, mm. but for our events, they don't because they they use it to bring people together. Yeah. That's what I would do, but I want to do it on a very large scale. Like I've told you, I'd love to do an expo of some kind. Yeah, like, now that'd be interesting. Yeah, I think I think we we could be there. We, it, we it'll, it'll take just take time. time. We the the good thing about our events mm. I, now is that like it still feels quite personable. Mm. Like you, you still that is we know the developers, we know the people, the gamers that come, mm. we know the people that sit in between that because at the, at the core of it, like mm. we're still gamers. They're the developers are still gamers, and there's also a lot of gamers that would like to know what it's like to be a developer we have people who are we've had people come in and be like oh yeah i want to get into games but i don't really know how to and and, and, and we literally just go well go talk to these guys they, there's yeah there's like you got about 15 showcases there's 15 different stories right here that you can yeah. just learn from and siphon that information from yeah and talk to them so um wrapping things up a little bit yeah. but we've still got like 10 15 minutes like um this is a th- like a thing that I think I might do for every guest is um, if an a- if aliens were to come on Earth to Earth, 
and you were to pick the fur the 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 best three four should we say three the best three examples of what video games are right what okay. would you walk up to them first interaction you shake their hands right they go shows you video games son right okay <laughs> This shows those video games. For me, it would come from three things. One, I'd want to show they're capable of being art, but Ooh, there's a pretentious. There's, yeah, <laughs> I know, I know. There's, I hate the term should games be classed as art because I don't think we should strive for them to be classed as art. I already think they are, but I think the term mm. art has restrictions that I don't want to see implied on video games. Yeah, but I feel. I know it's carrying on. Yeah, carrying. On. So, so uh, sorry about that. We had some technical issues as always. Um, so I was asking Simran, uh, what what does he feel like? Why does he feel like classifying video games as art has limitations on on what video games can I be? I think it's important for us to consider them art because I think games are an art form. Yeah. The problem is I don't think we should strive to be art. Yeah. Why do we have to prove that we're arts people? Like why? Yeah. Because every other industry aside from video games has had to do that. Films have had to prove that they can be an art form. Music has had to do that. Yeah. What have we got to prove? We are actually the best entertainment industry in the world because we're unlike any other art yeah, forms. We're interactive art. That's never existed before when you think about it on yeah. a level. Like music is interactive. We listen to it, but you're not in control of the music. Of we're course, in yeah. control of the game. No, that's, and, not, that's completely... I think, it's the, I think it's the same when we speak about um, trying to strive for video games to be uh, films or like cinematic experiences. Like yeah, often, we've been there, yeah. we've done that. There's, we don't have to prove ourselves we don't need to be filmed we, don't we really need be, don't need to be filmed like, I'm all for trying to create a good looking video game like cinematography like Until yeah. Dawn making it look brilliant but there's a difference between sitting there and watching a game and then yeah. playing a game that's true that's true there is a difference a, a big difference I think um, going back to like the films as as uh, art or as mm. uh, pieces of cinema like we don't we, we we don't need to strive to become like television or, or TV or or I must have said the same word television or um, cinema because they can't be like us. Yeah, this is what I was. You know what I mean? They can't. Yeah. They they can't have the level of interaction. They can't have the the level of immersion that we yeah, do. Exactly, because this ties into what I was about to say. Is we're unlike any other art forms mm. because music and film. Okay, the different in how they are. Pers- presented but they're the exact same in how they're consumed mm. they're watched and listened because we watch music videos yeah, and then we listen well. to them we watch films and then we listen to them but what else can you do yeah that's true i'd like the mix i'd like to mix i'd like to see what like hmm. how we can mix video games with a well, like a concept album and stuff like that we've that done it sort of that. just dance like you know you're interacting yeah, with an yeah, artist but I, I get what you mean yeah that's like, true. Sort of. uh so yeah no going on to back to the question like yeah. Three video games, right. meeting aliens, you so, go shake their hands and they go, show your video games. Right. So for me, it would be for you. One would have to be like art because I want to be able to present that these things can be an art form. One would be immersion. Yeah. Where we'll show them like this is the power of a video game. Like a role game. playing game. Yeah. Maybe. And one would be technical performance okay. to show how you can actually basically, how impressive these things can be. So from an art perspective, it's a tough one because there's so many like what do I pick do I pick like a cute little indie game that's like Journey that I would consider out or do you pick something like The Order 1886 which I think is the most visually stunning beautiful game that's ever been created mm. like I would pick three games okay I'd probably go with something like The Order 1886 or Death Stranding something that's very technically I knew he'd be no, no, no. Death Stranding no, no, no. in there go on son no because Postman Pat, something Postman Pat, Postman like, Pat across, because the, across I'd, America. I'd want to present on, like something like Journey, something very abstract like Journey, or something that's very technically impressive. I think Journey is a good one. Yeah, something that shows both ends of the spectrum for art. Something that's very abstract but very pretty looking, and then something that's really realistic. I'm going to throw a spanner in the works. Yeah, what would be the fourth that would best demonstrate or replicate what it was like as life as a human? human being so if you give it to an alien right, and okay. was like play this game and it will That's communicate it. what not what it's like to be yeah what it's like to be a human relationships um relationships yeah role playing 
like no we all role play but see the thing is i was well, thinking the, they the same could be thing. they could do that by watching us yeah that's and just thing. like fuck with actually no no no, no because oh, actually yeah you're actually right that they could just fuck with us and play, <laughs> play real sim i get where you're like, coming from with sims all right so f- number one would be some technically impressive from an art standpoint something like journey death stranding okay. order 1886 well, pick, pick one, go. i'd probably say art. the order 1886 just because For art really because it is the most realistic game I've ever played. Okay. Like the rain in that game is ridiculous. Like you can just sit there and watch like actual individual raindrops fall oh, off okay. lamps. So the second one. The second one, right? I'd want to do something from immersion standpoint. Mm. So it would probably be. I'd love to say The Witcher, but I just don't. That's a default character. I'd want to give them complete control. But w- yeah, would we? Would they get? They wouldn't get that. I'd want to give them something like. Like Outer Worlds or Skyrim. Outer or, Worlds would be like, yeah, we or, know. <laughs> yeah. We've been there. I'd like... This is a really bad you know interpretation I think of I what's out there. Them, I think I'd give them Skyrim just because it revolutionised RPGs, in my opinion. Like okay. open world RPGs. Like I'd, t- any- I'd give them Assassin's Creed, me. Why Assassin's Creed? I go, if you mess with us, you don't know who's got a hidden blade, son. You know what I mean? Here's me trying to be all realistic, and then you're just like, yeah, just fuck them all. Yeah, yeah, words. listen. Yeah, yeah. Give an assassin you go, listen, with Templars, assassins, you don't yeah. know which is which, yeah. so don't mess with us. I'd give Leave them alone. Skyrim, because don't touch me. every big RPG, or even small RPG, takes inspiration from Skyrim today. Like, you can sort of yeah, see Yeah, that's it. true. And I think Skyrim... Not Elder Scrolls. Which, which, which one's the one before that, before Skyrim? El- Oblivion. No, Oblivion, we're, not, we're no? not giving them Oblivion. Okay. I actually couldn't get into Oblivion, you know. Engine. And I really wanted to. It was a combat. So would that be your third? Skyrim. No, that's second. Harder, that's immersion. Skyrim. Art immersion. Yeah. So I'd give them Skyrim for immersion. Yeah. Third, I'd give them some of this fun. Te- no, you said technical. All right, yeah, technical masterpiece, but that would be number four then, fun. Okay. Because games are meant to be fun. That is the fundamental. So what would be the fun? The fun, right. I'd want to give them something that would make them laugh. So like Chris was saying, I think I'd give them something like Sims where they can laugh or they can human like fall, f- human human fall flat. Anyway. So if, right. if they were just in a spaceship above us and was like, zap you here mm. and set this on fire. And... Or give them something like human fall flat or move or die or something that makes them as a collective sit mm. there and go, ah, these things are actually pretty fun, you know. Yeah. No, not the Untitled no. Goose game. We're not giving them memes. The, the, oh my God, that, that raises the question. Imagine if aliens came to Earth and they're like, what's a meme? What's a meme? Like what? But um, no, yeah. no. I think I think they're all valid points. I think I think. So if we have Skyrim, we have um, the Order, we have um, Human Fall Flat for the fun. Fun. So technical. Then what would you go? Okay, I'd want to give them something that. Something that I think has tipped the scales, like in recent, like it'd be a very recent game because mm. every year games get more and more technically impressive. For me, it'd probably be something like Red Dead Redemption 2 because I was playing that again last night. And the reason why I think Dead Red Dead is so technically impressive, it is the only game I've ever discovered that is so reactive to the players. And not I'm not talking about choice. I'm not talking about what you do in the world. In the moment. Is, that is just so reactive in the moment. To so everything you do. Like, yeah, not yeah, even, not, not a, even everything you do. Like, so like, you could be walking in on a conversation, right, in camp. Like last night... I saw a conversation that I didn't see in my first playthrough, which is just mm. Dutch. He's just going up to, and he's antagonizing that Kieran, the one that you pick up. Mm. And then you go up to Kieran afterwards and go, you need to start hassling him, boy. And it's just like little things like the world yeah, is the so Yeah, the continuation of the story outside of what you, All right, you and experience another as a player thing is a really like, good thing. So a few days prior, when you save Micah from the jail cells right at the beginning of the game, is I accidentally bumped into another guy on his horse and killed him and the horse. I was going back to mm. Mike a few days. Rotten corpse of the horse is still there. That's mad. How many games that would render crazy. that the rotten person? corpse and keep it there? Keep it there. No, that's understandable. And then even that's things like, so like, all right, we're gonna get into spoiler territory. Here, so no, don't, 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 don't be spoiling. It's, don't it's be spoiling. an example. I, I can't. Feel no, like... no, we can't. We can't. No spoilers, man. It's no spoilers. Real... Right. Okay. Right. It, I'll leave that there. Yeah, we'll leave that there. We'll leave that there. Listen. Um, yeah. So we've got Red Dead. We've got. Um, we've got Human Fall Flat. Yeah. We've got. The order eighteen eighty, and we've got Skyrim. Skyrim. No, I like that. Um, the camera's about to run out of battery. Yeah, which is great. Um, so we're gonna wrap it up here. Okay. Thank you, Simran. Well, Thank you for that. That was no, that was a really good conversation. We hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, we're gonna do another one um, soon. We're gonna do, try and do one one a week, maybe two a week. We'll see. We'll see. Can't do six a week like 
Mr. Rogan, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, for all that don't know, we're, we're developing a game called The Ottoman Empire. We'd love for you to come and get involved. We just put out a demo on Discord. Um, and also, we've got a, a Manchester Games Unite event um, on the 20th of... 20th. On Wednesday the 20th. Yeah. So um, come, come down, come and have a chat with us. Come and tell us your uh, three or four favourite games that you'd give to those uh, aliens who come come down and see us. So um, thank you for tuning in. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. 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 See you.